Okay, we are continuing with uh, what we did yesterday and the day before. Uh, we're not going to review all the questions. Mishle Chav Beis Tesva Ivelis Kshur Believe Nar Shevet Musar Yachi Kenami Menu. Foolishness is bound in the uh, heart of a. Oh, actually, I'm going to hold off on the translation for a second, okay? Because I, I, I have a, a thing. Okay, so first of all, um, I, I, I want to start off with the four sentence summary that I wrote. But I was thinking, since we haven't really talked about that concept this year, I just want to like advertise the advantages of writing notes like this. So the, I mentioned this yesterday that the assignment that I, I gave in my Michele class in high school was called the standard assignment. And, uh, and they would do this, you know, they, they, their assignment was they had to do this for one puzzle uh, that we learned every week. Right. So like we learn multiple ones, they have to pick one. Um, and I think if you are ever going to learn Mishle and want to uh, make a record uh, a record of your your uh, ideas, this is a good way to do it. So first, uh, you write the puzzle and its translation. And as we know very well, what translation you use is going to have a big bearing on like how you learn the idea. So it's important. Don't just tell yourself, "Oh, I'll remember the translation later on." Write down which translation you use for that specific idea. Exactly. Yeah, that's the worst you can do. <laughs> right? Copy and paste it from anywhere. Um, two is a, a title. And this is a big thing is like, you have to come up with a, well, in my instructions here, come up with a fitting title that captures the main idea or subject of the puzzle that we focused on in the lesson. The title must be broad enough to qualify as normal sound, a normal sounding title, like the title of a book, article, story, or movie. Okay, you got the students who, who like write full sentence titles. That's, that's not, that doesn't work but specific enough to distinguish this content from other similar content. So I, you get in the beginning of the year, students who will just say wisdom. <laughs> That's not a good title, you know? Um, and and I, 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 again, I, I think anyone who has listened to the Mishle, um podcast sees that I try to put in a lot of thought into the titles because it also helps you to go back and remember like what the idea was. The main part is the summary of the main idea. Summarize the explanation of the puzzle we learned in class in one to four complete sentences, no more, no less. Very important also, because you could, you know, sometimes you could do less, but the idea of the summaries is to create a, uh, something that will jog your memory of the idea as fully as possible, capturing as many nuances as, as you can. Uh, and and uh, it says, however, you may be liberal with your semicolons, within reason. And the reason for why I limit it to four sentences is for my own sake, is if I told myself, I'm going to write summaries of all the ideas we did, and just, it would just be unbounded, then I could just end up trying to write like a whole essay on each one. And then like, I just wouldn't do it, you know, so I have found in my experience, four sentences is a magic number, five is a little bit too much, three is, is too few, and then four is the is the main thing. Um, and, uh, and then this part is not relevant to your own notes, but in the assignment, I gave them the option. They either had to write a real world example, something that actually happened to them or that they read or that they made make up, or they could write about a disagreement with my idea. And this was more, more of a practical matter where you don't have time to necessarily like duke it out with every student in a short high school class. So I want to give them the opportunity to disagree or come up with their own original interpretation. So many times in class, uh, in high school, I would say, okay, that's, that's a good approach. Let's see if you could work out a full explanation or miscellaneous. Like if they made some sort of connection to some other idea we learned in another class, they could write that out. So that was the assignment. Okay. So let me show you what one of these looks like for what we did yesterday. So, uh, um, I wrote this and I sent it to Isaac and then, uh, I asked if he had any feedback and he had a piece of feedback, which I didn't incorporate into it because I wanted to do that live, um, and, and see if it works. But also as you read this, Tell me if I'm missing any like uh, nuances or important points. Okay. And remember, we had a lot of different variations on the idea. My goal is not to capture everything. It's to capture as much as possible to be able to reconstruct it. Okay. So here is what I did. Um, Mishle 12, 21, 15. When foolishness is bound to the heart of a youth, the staff of Musser discipline will distance him from it, i.e. from the Musser itself. Okay. So you notice I added the word when. Because I'm acknowledging here that we had a whole discussion about like when does this apply and when doesn't it apply. We said that there's a certain point where the nar internalizes the foolishness so much that he becomes the evil, right? Uh, but then we said that this is only, and then there are times when the evelis is like um, uh, is just something that they just like do on a whim, but it's not tied to their heart. So I was trying to, by adding the word when. I'm trying to capture the fact that it is only in this particular case 
when it's tied to his heart. Okay, which obviously I have to explain. Okay, and then the staff of Musser will distance him from it, the youth from the from Musser itself. Okay, not from the staff. And that was to try and answer Sean's question. Okay, so I, as I titled it, the naughty challenge of disciplining a youth. Right, that's going to bring to mind. If you look at the titles, that would bring to mind this idea. So now, remember, these are long sentences. Okay. This pasuk is addressed to a disciplinarian, for example, father, teacher, or authority figure, who believes that he can beat the Mishlaic foolishness out of a youth, i.e. one whose character is still moldable through discipline, whether through the harshness of his reprimand, the pain inflicted by an artificially imposed consequence, or by actual corporal punishment. I think that covers all the bases. His belief in the efficacy of this method is reinforced by the fact that it does often result in a short-term or even long-term change. However, this change is illusory, and will last only for as long as the youth has reason to fear another blow from the staff. Um, striking the youth will be no more effective than striking a knot. The youth's attachment to and identification with his foolish behavior will awaken tremendous resistance, which will cause the rebuke to backfire, complicate his relationship with the rebuker, and possibly even turn him off to the entire enterprise of Musser character development as a whole. Instead, instead the disciplinarian should approach the binding of the youth and his foolishness as a knot, a complex entity with a specific character, which can only be untied with a combination of subtle examination, sorry, skillful technique, skillful technique, and a lot of patience. Yes. Uh, yeah, in the uh, third sentence. Yeah. It's not that it won't be, it will be no more effective than striking out. It will like, Meaning, it seems like striking a knot is not just ineffective, but it also makes the problem worse. So I changed this because of what Sean said. Uh, because uh, Sean said that that you don't need to posit that for the knot muscle in the pasuk, right? The knot muscle, like the way the way we were saying it, based on that, is that there is a knot, and then the knot also becomes tighter, and it's a more conservative idea to just say that the knot will not get untied. That was your point, I think, right, John? Yeah, so that's why I omitted it, but it was a good call. Yeah, so Isaac's feedback was, I know Isaac's right here, but I just want to read it. Uh, it might be a good idea to add a clause about how it's limited to things that are tied to the youth's heart. So I was trying to fit that in. I, I acknowledge that in the, the title or in the, uh, in the translation and in the, um, the binding of, of the youth and his foolishness, uh, but I, I wasn't able to work that into the actual uh, summary right now. But yeah, so yeah. So if you think of a way to say that, I don't, actually don't want to spend more time on this right now, but uh, but that, that's the thing. So I, I highly advise you, if you ever have a Mishle Chavrusa, what, so when Levi and I had a regular Mishle Chavrusa, we would come up with the idea together and then we would take a few minutes in the Chavrusa to write out four sentence summaries and then send it to each other. And they would always be different, which is an, an amazing thing. You know, They would always be slightly different. And then we would talk about those differences and use it to refine each other's uh, summaries, you know? Uh, I, and I know like, you know, like uh, a lot of you are in college and like, you don't want extra work, but I, I, I'll tell you, I wish I had done this. Like, I mean, I did this from the start with all my Mishle ideas, you know, I have a, a file, but then I stopped it at a certain point and I wish I had done this with every Mishle puzzle because the other thing also is the ones that you write out, you remember more, you know, or you can reconstruct more. So yeah, that's, that's my little plug for like uh, four sentence summaries. Okay, now let's go, unless there are any questions on yesterday's idea, let's go on to Mepharshim. Okay, so first one you don't have, which is Sadiagon, and I'm starting with this one because it's completely, I think it's completely different from what we uh, what we had. Okay, so let's actually review Sadiagon's translation, which I don't know if this is gonna matter. Sadiagon translated it as, Ha'ivelas ha'kashura b'lev ha'na'ar yarchi kenem imino shevet ha'mosar. The foolishness that is tied to the heart of the youth will distance him from the staff of, uh, of rebuke. Okay, so. Uh, Sadigon in his commentary, or sorry, yeah, his commentary says, "In kashiras hasiklus hazo believe mitchunas mahus hanefesh hamavchenes." This foolishness, siklus, that is tied in the heart, which I think he's going to say means mind, is not one of the essential attributes of the rational soul. Because in essence, its character is truth and righteousness as we have explained. Okay. Ella, rather, this foolishness, is bound to the, to the uh, youths. Mima, she makablim v'shomi'im b'katnusam. 
based on what they receive and hear in their youth, in their, in their childhood. Before their thoughts and their rationality become strengthened. Uh, I don't know if this is a typo. I don't know what, oh no, sorry. I think this is, uh, and it will come to strengthen in, to, to wait. They will come to embrace it meaning the, 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 the effects of their youth, to the point where chinuch will become necessary. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know how to translate this. Kinehem ubina al and understanding against their will. Um, hold on just a second here. Let's stop there. Okay, so what is he saying so far? I'll, I'll just repeat it again in English. Um, uh, the, the tie between the the foolishness and the mind is not one of the essential attributes of the soul, of the rational soul, because in, in essence, the rational soul uh, is, uh, in, by its character, um, uh, its character is truth and righteousness. Rather, this foolishness is tied to the youths based on what they receive and hear in their childhood before their thoughts and their rationality become strengthened, and then it becomes necessary to educate them afterwards. It's like, it's like uh... It is like a disease. How so, though? I mean, like, uh, you know, you have something like untainted. Yeah, right. Which is like a, okay, like right. Rational, and right. You have, you know, culture. Yeah. Or, or the world we live in right now. Yeah. Stealing so, so he's done, you know? right. So he's taking a stance on what famous question? Um, Nature's versus nurture, and what is he saying? Nurture. It's nurture. He's saying it's all nurture, right? That that by design. The uh, the the telemelukim is is geared towards MS and Zedek. Now that does not mean that a baby thinks according to MS and Zedek. It means that if you don't disturb it with other stuff, it will naturally develop in that direction. And there's another pasuk that uh, says that. Uh, I'll call you guys in a second. Um, in uh, in Kohelas, uh, um, it's uh, Kohelas seven twenty nine. Which says, "Levad um, reize uh, matasi." Aside from this, see that uh, this is uh, what I found. Asher asa elokim es adam yashar. God made man yashar straight. Vehima bikshu chishvonos rabim. But they, man, sought many schemes. Okay, in other words, like by by your programming, so to speak, like your telemukim does what it does in a pure and undiluted way. Uh, but then it's messed up from outside. Yeah, what are you going to say, Chaim? Okay, sure. Yeah. Sean, were you going to say something? No? Okay. Um, I, I just want to bring one more Raya because we're in Shuvah season. Uh, uh, this, I still hold this is the most underrated Rambam and Hilkos Shuva. Okay. Um, and I, I, you might have heard me say this before, but always good to review these things. Um, so uh, what is the sixth parak of Hilkos Shuva about? No. no. Most underrated parak. And this is something, by the way, which you know, I, I've said this in the Rama Bikyush here, you really should go through Hilkos Chuva every year. Okay, not, you know, I, again, I know there's the, the, the famous thing that like, you know, there's 10 Prakim Hilkos Chuva, you could do it on the Asheris Made Chuva, and then there's the famous joke, right? Which I don't need to say. I don't know. Right, did, uh, did, um, did the Ramam, I heard this from Rabbi, did, did the Ramam write 10 Prakim uh, in order to correspond to the Asheris Made Chuva, or did God make Asheris Made Chuva to correspond to the Ramam's 10 Prakim? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, um, but uh, but um, but you should you should at the very least be familiar with the chapter headings, which I'll say right now, even though this is, is not Rama Bikyus. Chapter one, Vidu and Kapara. Chapter two, Shuva and the Darkei Shuva. Chapter three, how God judges the world and who does and doesn't have a Chelik Malam Haba. Four, the things that are Ma'akiv to Shuva that that are obstacles. Five is Bechira. Six is apparent uh, contradictions to to Bechira from Psukim. Seven is the hard to define parak, which is chuva before death, chuva on deos, and the personality of the ball chuva and the effects of chuva. That's a good question to like, how do you unify that parak? Eight is schar v'onesh in olam haba. Nine is, is uh, brachos and klalos in olam hazeh. And ten is ovid miyura and ovid mi'ava and lishma and like the, you know the highest levels of service of God. So that's you know. So the sixth parak is the most underrated parak, and this halacha is the most underrated halacha. Okay, um, so again, the, the context is, this is Sefer Hamad, Hilkos Chuva. Uh, the context is um, 
Psukim that seem to go against Psukim Harvey Yesh Batora over Divir Anavim Shein Nirim Kesosrim Ikerzeh. There are many Psukim that seem like they contradict uh, uh, this Iker. So he, uh, one of the Psukim he quotes is in Halacha. Dalid. Um, yeah, no. Hey. No, yeah. Umahu Zesh Amar David Tov Yashar Hashem Alkin Yore Hatayim Badarak Yadrich Anavim Bamishpa Yelamin Anavim Darko. I'm bothered by the fact that this is not the strongest question, okay? But uh, but it's still a, a good thing. So he says, um, what is this that David said? Hashem is good and upright. Therefore, he instructs the sinners on the way and he guides the humble in ju- judgment and he teaches the humble his way. Now, what's the apparent problem for Bechira in that puzzle? It's not very um, clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So that is the question, right? Is that it sounds like it's in God guides sinners on the way. I don't think that's such a problem because like we call it Torah because Torah guides us. No one says, oh, God gives the Torah. That violates free will, you know? But um, okay, we'll, we'll go with this question. So what does it mean though that God guides the sinners um, and uh, what do you call it? And uh uh, and how is that not a contradiction to, to free will? So he gives two answers. One, one is that God sent us Nevim to teach the Dark Hashem and to return people in Shuva. So God guides us not by like manipulating your mind, but by giving you Nevim, right? So again, that's another underrated point within an underrated halacha, within an underrated parak, with an underrated safer, to be frank. Um, but uh, that. Um, I think people are upset that there are no Navim around today. And like, I feel like if anyone asked God that, he'd say, did you, did you read all the Navim? Like, I gave you all these Navim. Like, how you want more, but you didn't even like learn the Navim, you know? So what? I know, right? Right. Okay. Uh, gets you right in the, uh, in the guilt. Okay. <laughs> but then here's the, here, here's the point that I wanted to make that's connected to Saadi going, the ode, how else does God guide us? that God gave man the capacity, the faculty of learning and understanding. This, this tendency is in every man. As long as a person is drawn in ways of chachma and tzedek, meaning the more you're drawn towards chachma and tzedek, towards wisdom and righteousness, then he, the more you desire and chase them. Okay, so in other words, by nature, man can learn and understand, and not only can learn and understand, but is drawn to Chachma and Tzedek. Okay, that's a natural thing. Okay, that's what Tzadigon was saying. Don't, okay, well, we'll get to Tzadigon back in a second. And this is a revolutionary interpretation. Right? One who comes to be purified is assisted. Now, how do most people interpret that? That one who comes to uh, be purified is assisted? Yeah, you do your hishtalis and God will help you, right? Now that's true, but how is the Ramam saying God helps you? Kolomar, meaning to say, yimsa atmo ne'ezar ahadavar, you will find yourself assisted, but what does the Ramam mean in this context? How, how will you be helped? How is God helping you? More specific. Remember, he's answering the question, what does it mean that God instructs people? So he sends them to Vim and... They have, an in, they have an innate desire to pursue Chachma and Tzedek, that the more you feed that desire, the more you will pursue it. So what does it mean that Habal Atari Masai Noso is that the more you, uh, okay, <laughs> this is the thing, is like, I think it's, it, uh, there's a mistake people make when it comes to doing tshuva or improving, which is that it's always an uphill battle. No, we know that there's a thing, such a thing as a downward momentum, right? That's the, um, the, uh, the flip side of this, Habala Tame Masainoso, one who comes to, to become impure, then he's assisted. The more you give into your, your psyche, the more you're drawn in that direction. But there's also a, a, a positive momentum. The more you give into the desire, the innate capacity to seek Chachma and Tzedek, the more you'll be drawn to that. And that's how God helps you. It's not like uh, 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 an external help. It's that it, he designed every person in a way where the more you 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 give into the part of you that loves chachma and tzedek, the more you'll be drawn to that. Okay. Yeah. Underrated Ramam. Yeah. Good to note this one. Okay. So now back to Sadigon. Okay. So so Sadigon, 
so our Pasuk, again, let's just read the Pasuk and then, and then summarize Sadigun again. Uh, so Sadigun is reading the Pasuk as uh, the foolishness that is tied to the heart of the youth will distance him from the staff of review. Um, so, and Sadigun, what? Yeah, I like what he says too, but let's just make sure we can uh, see it in, in the Pasuk. And he's saying that the foolishness here is not talking about what we said, which is like, um, well, okay, it, it is, but it's not limited to like bad decision-making. It's any type of foolishness. And his point is that that you start off, don't think, okay, well, what's the Havamina that he's refuting? I mean, he says it explicitly, I, yeah? I, I think that's what we're coming up Yeah. What's, what's the... You go ahead and say your half-baked idea, and then we'll, we'll help develop it. Yeah. 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 And you make, you make an explicit point to say that, like, evil or bad is yeah. not an People. Yeah. And like it seemed like the way we were talking about it is that like the nature of children is to do wrong things or right. stupid things. Yeah. And he's like, he's refuting, he's refuting that. that. The nature is to do good things and if they get nurtured and like that. Exactly. Things. Right. Uh, yeah. That is so that is his big point. And the Kiddush is really in parenting and in teaching, right? Is that that he's trying to disabuse you of this notion like this child starts off bad, you know, and like that's why they have bad qualities. Or the notion that like you know, um, somehow the child was instrumental in his own, like, you know, corruption. And Sadiq was saying, no, it's all the parents and upbringing um, uh, in youth. And then those things become hardened and become bad qualities. Now that does not absolve the katan for, or the, the na'ar from like taking charge of his own development. Um, um, right, because obviously Mishle is geared towards people who are, who may not have had the best parents and upbringing, but like they can, they can, uh, uh, you know, correct the, themselves. Yeah, Mati? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, just one more point here, because this is, again, this is, this is uh, my jam in terms of like, I like educational philosophy. So the best, okay, you know, I, I have like the, I don't know, I've, I don't know if I think I've ever written this out, but the top 10 list of the most impactful essays uh, that I've ever read, uh, This Is Water being one of them, uh, on that list is Mortimer Adler's essay, Teaching and Learning. And this is what my entire educational philosophy is based on. So I just want to take this little excerpt here. Uh, so this is about like teaching, teaching, right? Not just Musser. All learning is either by instruction or by discovery. Okay, that is with or without the aid of teachers. The teachers who serve as instructors may be alive and in direct contact with those whom they instruct, as is always the case in classrooms or tutorials, or they may be present to the learner only in the form of books. The teacher who instructs by his writings cannot engage in discussion with those who are reading his works in order to learn. He can ask them initial questions, but he cannot ask any secondary questions, questions about the answers they give to his initial questions. He is therefore seriously limited in his performance of the art of teaching, though he may have done what he could to apply the rules of that art in his effort to communicate what he knows. Okay, now this is the, the point. Th that the effort to communicate what a man knows is not in itself effective teaching follows from the fact that such efforts are seldom, if ever, successful, and at best, they succeed only in part. In other words, don't think that teaching is just communicating what you know, right? And I'm sure we've all had teachers who think that teaching is just like throwing knowledge at the students, okay? Successful teaching occurs only when the mind of the learner passes from a state of ignorance or error to a state of knowledge. The knowledge acquired may be either something already known by the teacher or something about which he himself is inquiring. In either case, the transformation effected in the mind of the learner is learning by instruction only if another human being has taken certain deliberate steps to bring about that transformation. What the teacher does must be deliberately calculated to change the mind of the learner. Merely motivating someone to learn is not enough. Stimulation is not teaching. Okay, and then this is the last point I wanted to read. It's hard for me to pick excerpts from this, but since whatever can be learned by instruction must necessarily have been learned first by discovery without the aid of teachers, it follows that teachers are, absolutely speaking, dispensable. Nevertheless, they are useful because most human beings need instruction to learn what they could have learned by discovering it for themselves. If we recognize, as we should, that genuine learning cannot occur without activity on the part of the learner, um, passive absorption or rote memorization does not deserve to be called learning, then we must also recognize that all learning is a process of discovery uh, on the part of the learner. Uh, okay, you know what, sorry, I, I, I really, I need to read the entire essay, but I, I, I gotta stop you. Let me just summarize the point I want to pull out of the essay. The whole approach to teaching is based on the premise that Sadi Gun has, which is that, that the teacher never makes learning in the student. The only learning that occurs is the student's own mind 
can either discover something on its own or that discovery can be facilitated by the teacher, but it's the student's own mind that has to discover the idea. And, uh, and he gives this analogy later on from Socrates, which is that there are, um, uh, you know, in the ancient world, the word art was like for all like crafts and things that you do. So like carpentry is like an art, painting is an art, you know, uh, medicine is an art. So he says that, that there are all arts are operative, but there are three cooperative arts. Okay, let me explain it. Cooperative is the thing does stuff on its own and the purpose of the craftsman or the artist is just to facilitate that. So the three cooperative arts are medicine, agriculture, and teaching. Okay, so think about it. The body heals itself, right? No doctor can make the body heal itself. What can the doctor do? The only thing the doctor can do is to remove impediments to the body healing itself or, 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 or facilitate the body's healing of itself. The immune system and the body is, is the only thing that it can do. The doctor can't redesign the body, okay? Similarly, in agriculture, things grow on their own, right? But the farmer creates the best conditions for the growth and then removes impediments to the growth, okay? In contrast, let's say, for example, a, 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 a carpentry, tables don't make themselves, right? You have wood and the carpenter does everything, right? Or painting. There's no paintings that occur in nature. The, car, the, the painter does that. The last one is teaching, is that each mind seeks and is able to get knowledge on its own. And the most the teacher can do is facilitate that process by taking those deliberate steps to help the student discover stuff. So yeah, so I think that, that model is very in line with what Tadigon is saying, because he's saying that you know the, the, the mind, God designed the mind to be able to learn on its own. And the only thing you can do is help it or mess it up you know, as, as the parent or as the teacher, you know, uh, and if, if it was messed up, then like, you have to get back to that original state, you have to help the student unlearn a bunch of stuff, you know, in order to like, get back to that state where it can naturally see the truth again. Yeah. I wonder if it's better for if some parents, just like, if they don't know what to do, just leave them alone. Certainly. Yeah. I yeah. 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 Like Certainly. Yes. Like yeah. I mean, me. for certain parents. Yeah. I think that they, they do more harm than good than the interfering. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> right. The kid will actually just like either yeah, I mean, you do need, you do need, uh, 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 it is important to have discipline because there are things that, you know, children who, let's say the parents never set boundaries or rules or, or discipline, the kids can't regulate themselves when they grow up. And I've seen this happen, like, like, like kids who like, basically like, um, either, I, I can't blame it on the kids according to Sadi Gon, but like kids who, whose parents allow them to basically make the parent into like a servant or like push their buttons, you know, like these are the parents who don't set regulations for kids who do all their homework, you know, who like, like make excuses for them, who will drive to school to give them like their, uh, you know, the thing that they forgot. These, the, the, the parent thinks that they're benefiting the kid, but what they're doing is they're creating a completely dependent, helpless kid who, when he grows up and the parents can't do that, will not be able to regulate himself. And I feel so sorry for those kids because they have a lot more work to do as like you know adults than than the uh, the other kids would do. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking that like you know I feel like you know kids like because according to what we're saying right now, um, it could be that kids have their own their their own world and whatever they do is kind of like from an innocent framework. Like yeah, not, if they're doing something, it's not because oh oh it's like if a kid takes someone's money, it's not like he's consciously aware of like selling. It's right. Yeah. What he's doing. So like the parent could either leave him alone and in which case the kid will just take his money thinking that's okay. Yeah. But that's where the parents are set in and be like, look, that's actually still- Yeah, right, right. There's a, there's a way to do it. And I think this so, uh, this ties to what, no, no pun intended, this ties to what we did uh, yesterday, which is that the parent does have to approach it as a not, right? In other words, a very subtle, you know, complex thing. And the parent has to address the kid at their developmental level. Again, that's the big idea of the parenting theorem, which everyone should listen to, uh, most important theorem in TDL. Uh, that the the mistake being the little man or little woman theory where you treat the little kid as if it were a fully grown adult and you rebuke him you know when the kid steals something you react as though the kid is going to become a criminal you know and like you chastise them or like like the uh, the example he gives in the tape is like a, a you know a, a kid like like takes off his clothes in public and you're like oh you're gonna become a pervert you know like like stop doing that like how can you do that you know uh, it, that's that's not what the kid's thinking he's operating based on his own premises yeah, yeah. okay uh new idea okay so rabak who is in the end of your packet right after the page that you're on um it looks like this it says page top top cook nem hey um uh and it is on the left column test uh so i don't fully understand this one but i think it is an interesting approach believe hanar 
Kishura Ivelas, in the heart of the youth, foolishness is tied betchilas inyano at the beginning of its uh, development, the beginning of its character. Because since he is hasty and um, impulsive to do what he wants, lo yidruch b'inyana b'sibos hanosos. Okay, this is Rabbagi in jargon. Sibos hanosos means in the most effective way possible. Okay, he will not do things in the most effective way possible. Okay, v'lo yishyashiv lihis bonin mashiroi lasos. He will not be deliberate. He will not take time to contemplate what is proper to do and what is proper to avoid. Okay, pause here for one second. So he is defining Ivelis the way that I define Ivelis, okay, based on uh, Rabbi Moskowitz and my uh, Mishlaic jargon. Uh, Ivelis means short-sighted thinking, right? Is impulsive short-sighted thinking, focusing on short-term pleasure and avoiding short-term pain as opposed to like a uh, long-term. So He's saying that that's the that's the character of the youth it is is uh, he's impulsive, and because of that, he's not going to look for the most effective strategies to do things. Nor is he going to consider should I do this thing or not, okay? Because he's just caught up in the immediate. Ah, shape musar yarchit mehanar ha ivelas hazos. But the staff of Musar, which we don't know how he's defining that yet, will distance the youth from that foolishness. Uluze roy la adam liyaser beno betchilas inyano. For this reason. It is proper to discipline the youth in the beginning of his development, because then he could uh, 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 help him acquire Musar discipline, right? Again, this Musar is not rebuke. This is like self-regulation, okay? And then he quotes, he doesn't quote the footnote, quotes um, uh, the famous process, which we did uh, last year, uh, train the youth according to his way, and even when he grows old, he will not uh, depart from it, which we have on the same page on the other column, Pasuk Vav. Here's the Rabag. So he learned it in a negative way, that if you train the youth according to his natural way and tendencies, meaning, let's say this kid is like lazy, and the person in charge of the kid's upbringing allows him to indulge in that laziness, right? Or is, you know, procrastinating or not hardworking or like making excuses. If the parent like uh, trains him in that way, what'll happen? Oh, sorry. And the parent does this thinking that the kid will get Musa when he grows up, right? Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll coddle him now, but when he grows up, like he'll develop. So what's going to happen? He will not be able to, to, to take the kid off that path when he grows up. And the kid won't be able to get himself off that path when he grows old. But again, it doesn't mean absolutely, but it means not likely. You know? So he's saying basically, so the, the Rabag in our project does not define Shevet Musr, but the, the idea is, is when to discipline the youth uh, in, uh, to combat this tendency of the Ivelis. So can we now go back to our Pasuk and uh, get an idea out of the Rabag? Does it? Uh, well, let's start by saying the differences and then and then we can go from there. So the, the differences are, anyone want to say? Yeah. Uh, you have that? Okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this sounds nearly like the opposite of what we were saying in ways. Um, yeah. where it sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently it's not obvious either way, yeah. No, where it does sound like, I mean, what we were saying is kind of like, don't do much to be like push back the kid and kind of like, we were saying like very delicate things. Yeah. But like not much of what you're going to do. And I think that does wind up allowing the kid to do a lot of what the kid wants to be doing then. Yeah. And now the box seems to be saying, well, don't just let him go and do whatever he wants to do. Correct. So it sounds like, and maybe still then to read it in this basu, of um, not leaving that not alone because, like, don't leave it not alone because they're just part of the future. Don't hit it, but don't leave it alone either. Like, yeah. you have to be. Right. Okay, right. So, so two differences, just to articulate this uh, two differences between the way we're interpreting and the way the raw bog was. Our, the essence of our idea was how to discipline and how not to discipline. Raw bog is not telling us how, right? He's telling us when. Right. Um, and then what you're saying now, David, is that like in a way, um, our approach and the Rabags are opposites in the sense of two opposite sides of the Pasuk, you know, in a way. Right. Meaning that our Pasuk was addressed to someone who 
wants to discipline the youth but has the wrong derech and thinks that you've got to beat it out of him. And the Rabag is addressing the, the, the opposite person who thinks I shouldn't discipline the youth at all, right? And saying like, no, if you don't discipline him now, then you're not going to, um, what do you call it? He's not gonna be able to do this in the future. But what does the Rabag focus on though? I think that, that might be a clue. Uh, in his parish, if you just look like, you know, we say he does not focus on how to discipline the youth. What is he focusing on though? So when? Okay, when, yeah, correct. The, he, the, we said when, and he says when, but the other thing he expends the most words on. What well, 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 is that on it? Oh, uh, uh, Tesvav. Uh, the nature of the kid, right? Yeah. I, I was thinking about when we were reading it. I'm not sure if we're going to side or not. Um, Okay, that's a good question. And we will hold that on the side. I think that's a good that the question comes up. So we, let's just repeat what he says. He says, um, the, so what does it mean that the Ivelis is kasher belev hana'ar? So I think he's not saying it the way that we were, where it's like tied to it as an external. We were saying that the Ivelis is like bad mishleif behavior, which either is like fully internalized by the youth or tied to the youth or happenstance, right? Those were the, our three divisions, you know? Uh, Rabag is saying that this is just part of the nature of youths. All youths are impulsive. And the two manifestations of the impulsivity are they don't think properly how to do things, right? They don't strategize and they don't properly think what to do. So in terms of the ends and the means, they act impulsively, right? And that's, again, the youth in the beginning of Mishle, the kid who's like gets involved in the gang, right? So like the kid wants money and he wants social approval, you know? So these guys come along and they say, oh, if you join us, you're, you're going to get money and you're going to be powerful like us. And he just goes along with them. You know, he doesn't think to himself, oh, there are other ways to make money, like through Chochmah. And like, there are consequences to this, you know? So he's focusing a lot on like the, the natural state of, uh, of Ibelis, of impulsiveness in the youth. And I think Chaim is right that Saad Yimun was focusing really on the mind. And in the mind, the mind is equipped to be able to think clearly. But Saad Yimun, but Rabag is focusing on the psyche. So they're not necessarily like denying each other, but they're focusing on different aspects of the youth. Yeah. I kind of want to climb a note or two though. Okay. Um, and say that Roman is saying that the nature is impulsivity. Yeah. Now the way that things have come about, well, sorry, there are two ways. That means that he doesn't think, he doesn't think about the future. He doesn't think plans through now. Yeah. Or when to do it, right? Yeah. So that is just the base, that's just baseline of what he does. Yeah. Right? He's all over the place. But yeah. if you bring in Zajig though, what he's saying, that the and I think he, I think the the the, 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 the reason that, that that the kid impulsively shoots his negative things is because that, that's what he picks up. That's yeah. What he likes. Okay. Right. Not that like he's impulsive, but he's impulsively bad. He's right. Just impulsive, and then he's he's externally uh, uh, programmed. Yeah. Right. To, to do things that are negative. Right. That's a good point. Right. And so so he is so just to articulate it again. So the uh, so uh, the way that they are that so Sadigon is talking about the mind primarily, and Rob was talking about the psyche, but the way, what they both have in common, because the kid's mind is not developed from a young age and all he is is psyche, the kid is just a pure bundle of psyche, um, then, uh, then according to Sadiqan, he's programmed. And so in other words, the impulsivity is the default mode of decision-making, yeah. but the content of that decision-making is gonna be programmed by the outside. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's good, yes. Okay, so just methodologically, when we were approaching this pasuk, you said not to say that the thing being distanced from was the foolishness, but that it does seem to be the way in which he's bringing the pasuk. Uh, so yes, the argument are how he does this. That's true. Yeah, strange. yeah. So like, I can't answer that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, so either, there's two possibilities. One possibility is that grammatically, Evelis could be perhaps Evelis could be um, uh, uh, masculine, right? Uh, which I, I can actually check. I thought I checked this. Yeah. Right. Checked yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one possibility is maybe he has a different grammatical theory. Right. Uh, the other possibility is that he plays fast and loose more than we do, mm -hmm. which is also possible. Okay. I mean, uh, we've been known to do that. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's good. 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 Good methodology call out. So, so, yeah. So just going back to like the robot and like yeah. um, understanding you know, how we're learning the team. Yeah. Um, so what we just said was um, that the Rabag and Rapsadiga, they're not necessarily disagreeing with the nature of the child. Yeah. But more about the, uh, you know, uh, be because of his youth, he's going to 
be re- reacting or in a certain way, yeah. but not necessarily from like a, a, him being naturally foolish. It's just that he has no other like choice. Yeah. Because he has no other you know, method of approaching him. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. 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 He has no other, he can't think on his own. And he's just programmed by the outside and his mind isn't developed yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what is the idea according? What's the, can we just state the main idea according to Robach? I mean, I think we've been dancing around it. Because what, what I'm looking for, by the way, is again, the Robach writes a lot about what the Evelis is and then doesn't tell us how to discipline, but imply, but t- tells us when to discipline. I'm just, I feel like it's uh, not unified. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a problem. You know, if you if you have uh you know like we all have like we do have some certain characters and traits right mm-hmm. like you know we're either lazy or we're angry or whatever and like when you see when someone's to the opposite extreme that's what that's really what you should you know take a stab. Are you trying to answer how to this one? No when. When. when one. Yeah, the when is going to be the, during the entire period of youth, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean the entire? Well, because he's learning that the Evel- we learned that the Evelis is a particular disorder that some youths have and some youths don't have. He's learning that the Evelis is like the state of youth is one of impulsivity. So all youths are going to need discipline. That's how he's learning Nick Sheriff. Nick Sheriff said, by the way, I think Nick Sheriff, we were learning Nick Sheriff as a specific relationship between the foolishness and the youth. He's learning Nick Sheriff to mean like, like, I, I don't know if this is the, what does the word endemic mean? Endemic. Endemic. I feel like I'm, that's the proper word. Yeah. Uh, endemic. Uh, regularly found among people in, or in a certain area. So that, that he's learning Nick Sheriff means it's endemic to youths. Not every single youth is like that, you know. But uh, it's like he's not saying we were saying it's like a subpopulation of the youth. Their evils is Nick Sheriff's Belibo. He's learning that this is like a, a, a common thing. Yeah, fine. Yeah, so I want to mention, so this is uh, the part of what you said, but um, it was that one on the, the, the Yasser? Yeah, to right. discipline, so, yeah. Right, so you have to say, you know, like, the, the mantra, or like, to... Uh, yeah, to correct. I'm not sure he, what the Yasser, if that means to discipline lightly or toughly, but he, yeah. he's definitely not saying... Oh, okay. Like this is an inroad. Okay, so the inroad is like this. So he's not learning the essence of the muscle to be shaved. Yeah. Yeah. Or sorry, he's not learning that the essence of the decision in the Pasuk is to smack with Musser. So he's learning the essence is give him Musser, right? Uh, or train him in Musser. So we have to answer also, what is the muscle of Shavit here? Okay. And by the way, Shavit can mean a disciplinary stick, but it could also mean a guiding rod. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, Moses. Yeah. Uh, where do we get that? Well, yeah, yeah, shave it uh, from Yehuda. Lo Yasur Shavit Yehuda is a scepter, right? Um, yeah. Um, or plain shot in the Tehillim Chaf Gimel, Shivtacha uh, Umishantacha Hima Yinachamuni, that God as the shepherd guides us, uh, comforts us with the staff. Um, so just take, let me just take a, 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 quick, uh, a quick thing here. <laughs> if you just connect the dots, yeah. if impulsivity and not thinking about how to do stuff and what to do, if that's the Nar's problem, what form is the Musa going to take? It's going to take, the form it's going to take is showing him how to strategize and showing him the consequences of the actions, you know, and the benefits of the actions. So, so I think that's the plainest shot. Uh, and maybe that does fit with the scepter, with the, the shave it thing is you have to lead him in being able to, you know, to think about like, he, like Shepard. Like yeah. yeah. He, he has to be, you have to show him like, okay, if you do this in this way, like maybe that's not going to work out right. Like if you just like, you know, and again, like you, youths do this, like, like, I don't know, they take spontaneous road trips without planning, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, enough uh, food or like they go hiking and don't bring enough water. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the way that I'm seeing it is like uh, decision making is kind of all over the place. Yeah. In the in the way of Amar and that <clears throat> like a, a guiding yes. Staff okay, good. Or like a guide, like yeah, like we'll, we'll we'll distance him from like the uh the many different paths. Okay, hold on. This is gold. This is gold. I gotta get this down. All right. <laughs> all right. Say it again. Uh, impulsivity. Yeah. Is uh is what? Is the yeah, yeah, is uh, is I'm gonna say endemic, okay, to the to the uh, the psyche of the youth, right? Um, 
and the guiding staff, staff of discipline will distance him uh, from it. Okay, good. And I'll, I'll try to make a summary of this also. Now, here's our question. Okay, we have two days left in the week, if all of us live. Uh, and um, so we could either, yeah, well, I always say that in my mind, but um, we can either uh, do a new Pasuk uh, tomorrow and Friday, or if you notice uh, the teaser I gave yesterday about the Malbim saying that this is about like um, uh, uh, skepticism and, and heresy, uh, uh, we could take the Malbim's approach and there's also someone who I never quote, which I want to try getting into more this year is the Gra. No, no, <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, uh, the, the, the Gra. So do you want to, and, and if we did, so either new Pusuk Thursday, Friday, or this Pusuk again tomorrow, and then Q&A on Friday. The latter. Okay, all right, let's do that. Then. All right, another. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. All right, have a good rest of the day. Yeah.